How's it going guys? In today's video, we're going to be learning how we can add navigation to our flat applications in Python. So the final result is going to look like this, where we have a screen with a navigation bar and a single button that says go to store. And at the moment we are in our homepage, but as soon as we tap on the go to store button, it's going to switch to a store view and our app bar is going to update the title with store and inside the store, the only option we have at the moment is to go back, but we can also tap on the back button if we want to go back to our home. So now we have a navigation that goes backwards and forwards, and this doesn't have to be just backwards and forwards. The buttons will link to whatever page you want to go to. So that's what we're going to be learning how to build today in flat. So as always, the very first thing you want to do is open up PyCharm or whatever your code editor is, and get started with a fresh new empty Python project. And assuming you have flat installed, you can go ahead and import flat as FT. Then we're going to import from flat, the view, the page, the app bar, the elevated button and the text. So those are the UI elements that we're going to be using in this video. Then from flat, we're also going to import the root change event, the view pop event, the cross axis alignment, and the main axis alignment. And feel more than free to arrange your imports however you like. This is just how I decided to do it for this lesson. But as soon as we have all of our imports, we can get started with creating our main entry point that as always takes a page as an argument and it returns none because we are only executing code. Now, all I'm going to edit on this page is the page title, and that's going to equal my store so that our window will have a title. And directly under our page.title, we're going to create something called a root change. And this function is going to take care of our views and our navigation. And it does have one required argument, which is an event listener, which will actually be a root change event. And this whole function will return none. And before we do anything, we want to make sure that we have no views. So to do that, we're going to type in page views clear. So it will clear all the current views on the page. Then we can add our views back. And the very first view that we want to have is the home view. So here we'll type in page dot views dot append. And inside we can add our view, which will have a root of slash. So this will be our home page or our index page. And this works both offline and on the web. So whether you're running this as an application or as a web app, it's going to function the same way. And the home view is going to have an app bar with the title, which is a text view that says home. And I want the background color to be set to blue because that's how I remember Flutter apps. And right now we're getting this red syntax highlighting and that's because this is supposed to be inside the controls. So I'm going to create that, copy our app bar and place it directly inside there. Then we can add a text view that has the value of home and the size of 30 and an elevated button with the text of go to store and an on click method that is actually just going to be a Lambda with an underscore. And we're going to use the page go method. And we want to go to the store and the view acts as a column. So I also want to center all of this stuff. And to do that, I'm going to add a comma after the controls and I'm going to set the vertical alignment to main axis alignment dot center, the horizontal alignment to cross axis alignment dot center. And I also want to give it some spacing, which will be set to 26. So this was our home view. Now let's create the store view. So right below the home, we can type in hashtag store. And if the page dot root is equal to slash store, then we're going to append this view. So what I'm going to do is actually copy all of this and just paste it inside our page root or inside this if check. Of course, there are a lot of modifications that we need to bring to this view, such as the root should be set to slash store and the title text should also be a store. So we just need to modify this to sound like a store. And instead of go to store, it's going to say go back with the onclick method leading us to the home. 
So now we have two views that we can go to using our root change function. But there's still one more function I want to create before we actually link all of this together. And this functionality will handle the back button because every time we click on back, we want to go back a page. And if you have three or more pages, you want to make sure that you go back one at a time, not that you go back to the home page because that can be very misleading. So at the bottom, still inside our main entry point, we're going to create this function called view pop. And that will take a view pop event as an argument and it will return none. Now inside here, we're just going to call page.views.pop. And we also need to refer to our top view, which will be of type view. And that's going to equal page.views at the index of minus one. So it's going to get the last one from that list. So that will allow us to move backwards because finally we need to type in page.go and we want to go to the top view dot root. And that's the functionality we need to go backwards in our stack. Now, all that's left for us to do is to link this functionality together. And to do that, we're going to type in page on root change, and we're going to set that to our root change function. Then page on view pop, and that will be set to the view pop function. And finally, or first I should add the equals there. And finally, at the bottom, we just need to type in page.go to the page.root because that's where we want to start out. We want to start out on our root page. And finally, all we need to do now is call if name is equal to main and run our application. So app and the target is going to equal our main entry point. So with all of that done, let's tap on that green arrow and run main. Then I just need to drag it from my other screen and let's test it out. Let's see what happens when we tap on go to store. As you can see, it took us to the store and we can also go back by tapping on go back. And if we want to tap on the back button, we can do so and it will take us back home regardless of where we are in the stack. And in this case, we only had two views, but if we had more, it wouldn't go directly home. It would go backwards in the stack one by one. So yeah, now we have an application that allows us to actually navigate from one screen to another, which means now it's up to you to add more pages and more functionality to your application because you can finally navigate from one view to another, giving your user more opportunities to explore your application. But anyways, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any questions or suggestions. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.